I just cleaned this out like two or three weeks ago. All right. It doesn't seem like this is the vehicle we should be going for diesel parts in. So with the engine properly mounted and the frame cleaned up, we can begin on the actual adaption of making this engine work in the Jeep. And we're going to start with the electrical system. But first, I have to take you back to last winter. Alright, we had to go with a bigger battery. See the size in these two? That green one just would not crank that diesel over. I had to modify the box a little bit. All right, there we are with a much bigger battery. Now, something else we had to do here. I could not get this thing to crank over. Barely, it would barely crank over. So I had to do, if you can see it here or not, I had to do like the big trucks, the big diesel trucks. I went from the ground right down to the starter. The bigger battery definitely seems like a must with the added electrical components like glow plugs. And it's certainly going to be necessary on these cold winter days just to crank the diesel over. And next, Kirk just decided to greatly simplify the wiring. Oh my god, okay, more scrap steel. My Jeep is a 1990 and the last of the AMCs. And sometimes it still shocks me to realize just how much pollution nonsense was on the vehicle even then. It was definitely very surprising to see just how much clutter could be removed from this once the old AMC 2.5 was taken out. We decided not to use the original Mercedes parts to activate the glow plugs. I believed Kirk's solution was much better and much more practical and added to the simplistic style of the Jeep. Some of these are wired in parallel, so if you lose one, you lose them all. So we're going to wire it in series have all the all the juice going to them individually so if one burns out <clears throat> it won't matter okay so the old Mercedes was on a timer you turn the key it was on a timer which was good for the average guy this here is old school we got a 50 amp switch which I will show you just go from the battery right there to the 50 amp switch to this fusible relay which I call it because it'll only take so much and until it'll get hot and open up so you won't burn those injectors out. Uh, glow plugs. Glow plugs, yeah. So you have more control over it. It's a lot more simpler system than that other system. We had. That one had Besides a timer, it also had individual relays. So if one burned out, you were trying to start the vehicle on one or two glow plugs. This here, that's not gonna happen here. This went to four individual relays where I wired up just going to one. So everybody's getting equal flow, everybody, no chance of anything burning out. So you know you got juice going to all the glow plugs. That's simple. All that just simply translates to this. All that footage was from the original build last year, and now I bring us up to date to the end of August in some record heat, where we continue to modify and simplify the Jeep, where instead of using the expensive Mercedes alternator, we are going to adapt it to the GM1 wire. It is a little hot, just so you know, Kirk. It does continue to surprise both me and Kirk just how many GM compatible parts are on this OM617. And if they are not compatible, they are certainly very close. The alternator is not much of an exception. We're going to swap the fan and the pulleys and make a bracket and this alternator will work.
This is where the alternator mounts to the bottom bracket closest to the engine. And you can see they're very comparable. And all it takes is a shim and it fits perfect. And once bolted in, the pulleys line right up. It really is remarkable. Now all we have to do is make an upper bracket and this alternator will be functional. So Kirk's plan is really very simple. Just get the GM alternator bracket and the Mercedes bracket and fabricate them into one. Kirk, is it hot enough for us? Yes, yeah, too hot. There, that's the culprit right there, huh? Let's see how close it matches. Where's that one? It's got that nut on it. Doesn't even look like it's the same thing. It's got a curve on it. Whack that right off and hold it up to the back here. And match that curve up. It almost seems like if you could bend that, it would actually work, right? No, you can see that one that sticking me out. This son of a bitch, he's pissing me off. Okay. So this one's got to go back. Every time you film, an airplane goes up over here. It never fails. Let's see where I got to cut. Let's try and get the angle right. That's why they're gloves. They're meant for it. Protect those beautiful welds. After painting the adapter bracket version 1, we left it there in front of the fan to dry. We were going to start searching around the mayhem that is Kirk's garage. We needed a couple of belts to power both the new alternator and the power steering. I guess that's... This is one positive to living in a junkyard. <laughs> There's many positives to living in a junkyard. Is there? Oh, yeah. Well, what's there to run? There's the, I mean, the fan, obviously. Yeah, it's run the alternator. Yeah. The alternator and the power steering. That's it, right? Yep. You know, the, there's no air conditioner to run. Hopefully our bracket has enough movement. Get one of those on. Beautiful. All right, let me read it. Good thing you hear that camera. Yeah, it's a good thing your eyes are attached to your face. <laughs> You're like a cameraman and an organizer. All right. So the one thing you got to remember, all the '57 Chevy, and the P38 were made with the standard system. Not that crappy metric system. Yeah, I can't run the wrench and insult the metric system at the same time. Okay. Well, that seems a little more reasonable. Maybe just a little closer. But... There you go. That's okay. Yeah, that's, that's perfect right there. Is our bracket uh, nice? Nice and dry. Looks good. Yeah. Rust, rust proof. Might have to slot it a little bit, but I think it's going to work. 
Uh, let's see what happens. Send a pitch. Okay, so you gotta slice it there and bring this over a little bit. Okay. We weren't surprised that it didn't work out the first try. So we took it back off and all that required was a little bit of widening. So the second fitment worked out perfectly, except for one small thing. The bracket was now hitting the cooling fan, but only just barely. A quick trim will quickly fix it. And just like that, the Jeep was now powered with a much better, much simpler alternator. In the next part, we'll put together the cooling system and the throttle adapter. As always, thanks for watching.